In last week's video, we covered how Sublime Text Macro System allows you to record the actions that you're taking and then play them back later. Now, you can use this to make repetitive actions easier, and you can even use it to create a key binding that executes multiple commands in response to a single key press. Now, as we saw, there's a limitation to the macro system in Sublime. It only allows you to record and play back commands that directly modify the state of the file that you are editing. There's a lot of commands in Sublime, and if you've installed any packages, they like have commands that they have installed as well. And what if you wanted to replicate those in a key binding with multiple commands? Now, macros won't let you do that, but there's not one but two different packages that currently exist that allow you to do this very thing. And we're going to cover them both in this video. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here and welcome to this video on executing multiple commands in Sublime Text. This is a bit of a logical follow-on from last week's video on the macro system in Sublime Text which allows you to record the actions that you're taking and then play them back. We're not really going to touch on that again here because we did cover that in the previous video but if you're unfamiliar with macros there's a link down below that will take you to that video so you can get yourself up to speed. What we will say about macros here though is that the limitation they have is that they can only record commands that directly modify the state of the file that you're editing. And that means you can use them to record additions and removals of text, movements of the cursor, changes to selection, things like that. But any command that doesn't do something along those lines can't be recorded by a macro. And there's quite a few commands in Sublime Text that are very useful that you might want to include in a sequence of commands that you're going to trigger all in response to a single key press, for example. So you wouldn't be able to use a macro for that. Now, fortunately, Fortunately for us, there is not one but two different uh, packages in package control that allow you to do that very thing. Now, here's the example that we have here. I have here just a sample text file. This could be any sort of file you like, perhaps a source file for the programming language of your choice or a web page or something along those lines. And now let's say as part of our workflow, we want to just take a temporary duplicate of this file off into another tab, say to keep this file safe. Uh, if we're going to try something potentially destructive or we want to compare after we make some changes or something along those lines. How could we carry that out? That's pretty simple. We could select all the text, copy it, create a new tab, paste it in. We now have a duplicate of this particular file. If we wanted to, we could even jump to the top of the file, enter some lines and enter the text duplicate so that if we accidentally save this file or save it on purpose, we'll know that this is the duplicate version and not the main version in case that matters to us. And that's not a large sequence of commands to take, but it did take still a couple of seconds to do that. And if I could do that in response to a single key press, and I'm doing this a few times a day, could really make my life uh, quite easier. And I'm going to go ahead and close this file for the time being. We don't need it. So how could we do something like this? Well, generally in Sublime Text, if there's something that you'd like to do and it doesn't seem like Sublime directly does it, you would, of course, uh, go ahead and look for a package on Package Control. And the easiest way to do that is to open the command palette and go to the Package Control Discover Packages command. That is going to open the Package Control website directly in your browser for you and take you there. And this is a good place to look for packages because although the Package Control command inside of Sublime Text allows you to install packages, it doesn't really give you any information on what those packages are and what they can do. That's what the web page is for. Now, as I said, there's two commands, uh, or sorry, two packages rather, that will help us out in this regard. The first one is chain of command. We can uh, see that right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. And we can see this is a particularly popular package. It's been around for about six years now. Uh, it has quite a few installs. And it also says it hasn't been modified for six years. That might make you think this package is abandoned by its author. No good. Realistically, the reason why this package hasn't been updated is it doesn't need any updates. If you were to look at the source of this thing, it's a single plugin that's 10 lines long. It's really simple uh, as far as code goes. There's really no changes that need to be made here. And this uh, will allow you to run a chain of commands in response to a key binding, for example. You just provided a list of commands and away it goes. The other package that does something like this is multi-command. And uh, we can see that down here at the bottom of the page. I'm going to click that. And uh, this is a plugin to run multiple commands on one key 
binding. And as we can uh, see here, this is a fairly new package. It's not quite as popular because it is new, but it is doing the exact same thing as chain of command does. It just has a different uh, interface, as we'll see in just a second. Now, when it comes to looking at package control and looking at one of these packages, it's nice to be able to search and see that this is what this plugin does. But every page on package control has a readme for the package that is associated with it. And you should always read the readme of the package before you install it, because it's going to have information in there, like how to install this thing. If there's any extra setup you need to do, any third-party software you need to install, it's going to tell you about that here, how you configure this if it's needed, how to use it. All that great stuff is here in the readme. And uh, this is a case of, because we're in a video, you should do as I say and not as I do, because we're going to jump directly back to Sublime Text for this one and pretend we read those readmes, but you should definitely read the readmes for packages that you are using. And um, so, of course, we would come in here and say we want to install a package, and we're going to okay, go ahead and install both of these. And the first one we're going to install is Chain of Command, like so, and it is now installed. No fanfare. And we're going to go ahead and install one more package, and we're going to install Multi Command. That's this one here. And again, absolutely no fanfare. And here's a reason why you might want to read the README for these things. We didn't get any messages from Package Control telling us we installed the package. If we were to look in here for chain of command, we don't see anything here. If we were looked for multi-command, there's nothing in here regarding uh, the multi-command. I'll even spell it correctly here. Multi-command. No, there's no package uh, commands available there. If we were to look in the preferences under package settings, there's no entries here. As far as you could tell, except for asking package control to list packages, you can't even tell you installed this thing because both of these packages are ridiculously simple packages that just have the single command in them that do the thing that you want. So here is, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at my key bindings file and I'm going to use the view package file to look at the user windows key map like so. You could also of course get this by going to the preferences key bindings menu in or do the same thing in the command palette but I'm going to do this here because then we can see the file directly and have a little bit more space on the screen I don't need to refer to the default bindings of in this particular case and I have two different key bindings set up here this first one at the top is for the chain of command uh, package and what this package does is implement a single command named chain and that command takes an argument, a single argument named commands. That argument needs to be a list of the things that are going to be executed because it is, of course, a chain of commands. And each one of the commands that is represented in this uh, commands list is represented itself by its own list. The first item in that is going to be a string. That's the name of the command. And the second item is going to be the argument dictionary that tells that command what to do. So we can see here in the chain of command, I have the commands for select all, select all the text, copy the text, create a new file, paste the text, move to the beginning of the file, and insert the character's duplicate uh, with a couple of new lines tacked onto the end. And that is bound to the key control alt c for chain of command. If I was to scroll this file down somewhat like so, here's the multi-command version of this. And uh, as we can see here, it's bound to a different key. Uh, the command is multi-command instead of chain. It still takes a single argument, that is commands. It's That argument is still a list of commands, but in this case, instead of being the and a list with the command and the arguments, we see a more traditional key binding item of the command to execute, uh, select all, copy, new file, paste. And then when we move to the top of the file and insert, we have not only a command, but also an args as well. And both of these things do exactly the same thing. So I am here in my uh, default Windows key map. If I was to press Control Alt C, that's the chain of command. I now have a duplicate of my key bindings file here. It says duplicate 
it at the top end. This is this exact file, just like so. And if I was to come back to this one, now we can see here this still has all of the text selected from that command that was just executed. If I went to the, the key binding for Control Alt M, that's going to trigger the multi command version. I get another duplicate that is exactly the same as the other one because both of these things do exactly the same thing. So which one of these you choose is entirely up to you. I personally tend to go for the chain command because you can represent the commands a little bit tighter. Now, of course, in the multi-command version below, I do have this sort of expanded out a little bit more. You could put each of these commands on a single line if you wanted to, but you do have to specify the command and args key in both of them, whereas you don't have to do that in chain. On the other hand, when it comes to creating these, you do need to know what command it is that you'd like to add into this chain, right? Now, we have covered that on, on the previous video, and that's also linked down below the various ways you could figure out the key, the commands that you'd like to do uh, uh, use in this particular case, because it's the same as creating a key binding. You're just using more than one of them. But in the particular case of multi-command, if you had a large sequence of text commands that could potentially be a macro, you could use Sublime's macro recording functionality to record yourself doing it and then save that macro. And the macro file is already in the format you could paste into this commands argument to give you those commands there as well if you wanted to go that particular route. So that might be a reason to use multi-command over a chain of command. But whichever one you use, this is a particularly easy thing to do and you can really make your life in Sublime that much better. As we can see, it is just that easy to execute multiple commands in response to a single action. Both of these packages are going to work perfectly for this. You can choose whichever one of them you like, whichever one you think is going to be easiest for you to work with. Now, as we saw here in the video, you can use this to create a key binding that does this, but that's not to say that you couldn't also add these commands to the menu or the command palette as well to really make Sublime Text your own. Now, of course, we haven't covered that as a topic on the channel yet, but it is coming. So if you haven't already done so, you might want to use that button down below to subscribe so you don't miss a thing when that video arrives. Remember, you can always use the comment section below if you have any questions, comments, requests for clarifications, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. But until those future videos, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.